heading all of you write down so this portion of this chapter is you know easier than the previous one we don't have you know conditions like we did in thermal dynamics but yes importance importance of this chapter of this portion if you see it is equally important whether you're going to write you know neat or je this portion is very important we don't have you know this chapter is this part is not that big okay we can finish this early but the thing is they definitely ask question from this so obviously if you see the uh, you know importance and advantage of sportsman if you are very good at it then it's a huge because there's a number of things you need to study over here and then definitely since questions you get from this point also you can solve those questions sometimes what happens they won't even touch thermodynamics part they last question from this only thermochemistry okay so don't consider this as uh, you know not that important okay it is easier to score marks in this particular portion acha okay so this okay okay so write down write down in this chapter or in this part we will be studying we will be studying the energy change in a chemical system the energy change between a chemical system and surroundings when oh let it be like this only it is surroundings we can have any kind of chemical reaction we can have a phase or we can have any normal chemical reaction so whatever kind of reaction is there how the energy change is taking place between system and surroundings that we are going to study right it is also named as the chapter is also named as chemical energetics chemical energetics and uh this is based on this is based on float that is first law of thermodynamics okay energy is conserved so there are only two possibilities in a chemical reaction like either the energy will get absorbed or the energy will get released mostly however delta h zero is also possible but very rare okay mostly we have two conditions where the energy is getting evolved where the energy is getting uh, absorbed right consumes okay so whenever we have uh, you know energy evolve or energy consumes we can represent in a chemical reaction right for example you see if i write down one reaction here
we have two SO2 gas plus O2 gas. It is two SO3 gas and we'll write plus six nine four kilojoule of energy. So what do you mean by this? Right? Here, the energy that we have, an energy of this, the difference in energy of this minus this is minus of nine, 694 kilojoule. Whenever you write plus sign over here, right, it means the heat is evolved or absorbed. Tell me. Heat is evolved or absorbed, evolved, right? So this plus sign means the delta H is negative. If you write down delta H for this reaction, that would be minus 694 kilojoule. Okay. If you write negative sign here, then delta H would be positive energy is getting consumed. Like for example, you see, we have a reaction N2 gas plus O2 gas. Plus O2 gas, it gives two NO. Two NO. minus 180 kilojoule of energy. Roughly I'm writing it down. So delta H would be what? Delta H is positive here. Okay, endothermic reaction. Okay, so obviously we have heat involved in this reactant and product. So what would be the heat of a reaction? Copy this down first. Then heading right down. No, it's not nice. The contrast is too high. I I, I knew that you will text this or. The contrast is too high. You'll get a strain in your eyes. Yeah. Okay. So right on. Uh, heat of reaction. We also call it as enthalpy of reaction. So basically here we are going to study about the different types of enthalpy of reactions. Like we can have enthalpy of combustion, enthalpy of formation, enthalpy of neutralization, enthalpy of solution, many things we have. Okay. So basically these are the definitions, right? Uh, we have few, few key points that you need to keep in mind, but it is basically definitions. And based on that, you have to do some addition or subtraction in order to get the desired result as per the question, how do we do that? We'll discuss all those things. So write down, first of all, heat of reaction. It is defined as the amount of heat. It is the amount of heat evolved or absorbed, evolved or absorbed, both, right? amount of heat 
evolve or absorb when quantities of substance or write down like this when the given substance reacts completely or we can say when the reaction is over reacts completely or when the reaction is over the enthalpy of reaction is equals to the summation of enthalpy of product minus summation of enthalpy of reacted we'll write down the uh, sum of the energy of uh, product minus sum of the energy of reactant that is the enthalpy of reactant product minus reactant basically okay next write down factors affecting this is not that important thus you need to have this information that what are factors which affects the heat of the reaction so write down factors affecting affecting delta h r so enthalpy change r stands for reaction first one is the physical state physical state of reactant and product physical state of reactant and product with one example this you need to know like you know they may ask you this particular comparison but values you don't have to memorize how it affects that is not important but if you look at this you know um, example you will understand like suppose i am taking h2 gas and half of o2 gas it forms h2o uh, you know gas and the enthalpy change in this reaction is all these are you know uh, uh, experimental this is the value which is given right you cannot find out this if certain things are not given in the question right so this is given delta h is this similarly if it is gas then this and if you have h2 gas and half of o2 gas equals to h2o liquid And the enthalpy change would be if it is liquid then it is found out find out to be 68.32 kilo calorie so you can see obviously there is a difference in enthalpy change that's why we say that the physical state of reactant or product affects the enthalpy of the reaction copy this down okay now the second factor we have second factor is the allotropic forms of element
the allotropic forms. Same thing here, you see. Carbon, if you are taking different allotropes, Suppose for carbon, one of the allotropes, we are taking diamond plus O2 gas. This converts into CO2 gas plus, if you look at the enthalpy change here, delta H is found to be minus 94.3 kilocalorie. And if the carbon, if you take graphite with O2 gas, it forms CO2 gas. So delta H for this reaction is minus 97.6 kilocalorie. So you see different value we are getting. So allotropic form is also a factor we have here. Apart from this two, we can have another factors like temperature. Not always, but temperature also you can consider. We can also have, you know, quantities of reactant. Of reactant is a factor here. We can also have the condition, okay? the condition of reactant and the reaction actually. Condition at which the reaction is taking place. Okay, see temperature is not always a factor. It is a factor when the heat capacity is a function of temperature. If it is not, then temperature is not a factor. If heat capacity is a function of temperature, so all these five factors we have which affects the heat of the reaction. Covid. One second, guys. Okay. <clears throat> Yes, now, um,
Yes. You see next. Uh, next, we have different types of enthalpy. Write down the types of enthalpies of reaction. Acha, one second, just one second. Uh, we have one more thing here. That is thermochemical equation. Heading write down thermochemical equation. Not not at all important. But I'll tell you what is thermochemical equation. Just you need to know the term here, right? Thermochemical equation is which one? Acha, that one. Okay, once again. See, basically, uh, example of temperature in order to factor. See, usually what happens. Uh, if you look at the actual scenario here, uh, just a second, Anj, uh, once again. If you look at the actual scenario here, right, then specific heat capacity depends upon temperature for every reaction. There will be some change in specific capacity when you change the uh, you know, temperature. But in the for solving questions, we don't consider the variations in a specific capacity with respect to temperature if it is not mentioned in the question. Are you getting my point? Uh, yeah, right. So if it is not mentioned in the question, then we ignore this, you know, relation of specific heat capacity and temperature. Most of the time, the relation would not be given. Like suppose if I give you one example, suppose delta H you need to find out, which is NCP dt. Correct. And if CP relation is given with respect to temperature, like suppose we have, you know, 2 T square plus 3 T plus 10. This kind of some quadratic equation or some relation of specific heat capacity with temperature is given. Then what you need to do? The CP you need to substitute over here when you differentiate this to find out the exact value. So we'll mention, we'll assume this if it is given in the question. Otherwise, we'll take it as constant. Clear? Yeah. Ansh, your doubt is harder to be. See, it's not like that. Uh, graphite is more stable, right? The carbon, the graphite form is more stable than diamond. That's why the natural, you know, form of carbon in which it exists in nature is graphite only. It's not diamond. However, at very high pressure, we can convert carbon into diamond. That's possible. Extremely high pressure. But the natural existing form of carbon is graphite because it is more stable in graphite form. And because of its high stability only, we have that difference in enthalpy. That's why we say every allotropic, every, every allotropic form has its own stability, has its own energy, right? That's why if the allotropic form will change in the reaction, the enthalpy of the reaction will also get changed. Got it? Thermochemical equation you write down. Write down. These are the equations which represents. These are the equation which represents thermal as well as chemical change. Like whatever reactions we have written so far in this particular chapter, that is thermochemical equation. Suppose I have this reaction A gas, the state must be mentioned solid liquid gas, right? B liquid suppose gives C solid. Randomly I have written some, uh, you know, equation here. So state of each reactant or product must be mentioned plus whatever the enthalpy change is there plus X kilo Zul. So for example, I'm assuming this enthalpy change must also be mentioned. So when the chemical change as well as thermal change is there, mentioned in the equation, 
it is said to be thermodynamical equations clear no doubt okay next you see the heading write down different types of enthalpies of reaction types of enthalpies okay the first type you write down it is enthalpy of formation enthalpy of formation it is represented by delta fh if it is a standard state then this would be not over here standard state enthalpy of formation definition write down let me is put this in the charge my laptop one second <clears throat> Okay, write down the definition here. It is the enthalpy change. It is the enthalpy change when one mole of a compound when one mole of a compound of a compound is formed from its constituent element constituent element which should be should be in their reference state or standard state right so two things are important here one is forms from its constituent element this is important another one is one mole should be formed constituent element and reference is it these three things are important here what do you mean by constituent element suppose carbon dioxide is forming so what is the constituent elements of carbon dioxide it is carbon and oxygen this is a constituent element of carbon and oxygen so these constituent elements must be there in their reference state the state in which it naturally exist like for carbon the natural state the reference state is graphite it is not diamond so it must be in graphite oxygen o2 it is the gas the natural state we have right so natural state must be there plus only one mole of substance must be formed if one mole is not there then the enthalpy that we get in this reaction that enthalpy is not enthalpy of formation see enthalpy is what enthalpy is an extensive property right enthalpy is an extensive yes or no is extensive so when we define an extensive property whether it is enthalpy or any other property we always define the amount that we are taking it is an extensive property 
So to define an extensive property, we always define the amount because one mole you take, you will have a definite value of energy. 100 mole you take, the value will be more, right? So what is the amount you're taking in order to define the enthalpy of formation? The amount is what? Amount is one mole. Did you get it? All right, we'll finish this enthalpy of formation and then we'll have a break. One second. Let me finish this. Okay. So you see, uh, two questions we'll discuss on this. The first one is, which of these reaction represents Which of these reactions represents the delta F H of CO2? Delta F H means enthalpy of formation. I'm going back one second. Enthalpy of formation of CO2. Done. Yeah. Four reactions I'm writing down here. So first one is CH4 gas plus 2O2 gas gives CO2 gas and H2O liquid. First one is this. The second one, we have CaCO3 solid gives CaO solid plus CO2 gas. Third one is carbon graphite plus O2 gas gives CO2 gas. Carbon, we have diamond plus O2 gas gives CO2 gas. Which one represents the enthalpy of the formation of carbon dioxide? Clear? What is the answer? Tell me. Yeah, obviously the first two you can eliminate easily because these are not the constituent elements. These are compounds over here. Carbon and graphite, we know diamond is not the uh, reference state of carbon. It is the third one. Okay. Now, based on this, you see one question they asked in J. What is that question? I'll tell you. 
the question is which of these reaction represents the enthalpy of formation after this we'll take a break which of this reaction these reactions represents the enthalpy of formation the first one is half of h2 gas plus half of br2 gas gives hbr gas the second one is n2 gas plus 3 h2 gas gives 2 nh3 gas third one is half of h2 gas plus half of i2 gas gives hi gas and the last one is half of h2 gas plus half of cl2 gas gives hcl gas okay now you see this the answer for this question <clears throat> is option d this is wrong this is wrong and this is wrong why this is wrong because the reference state for bromine you should know it is liquid it is not gas and you should know this you should know this information the same question was asked in je exact the reference state is liquid not possible this the reference state is fine but here it is given two moles it should be what it should be one mole hence this is also not right h2 i2 i2 the reference state is solid it is not gas so this is also not correct chlorine the reference state is gas and this one is fine so you should know the reference state of the element correct got it acha one second i'll go back this one yes tell me ans done one second auto okay
So you should know these things, right? What is the reference? I'll give you some example here, just you uh, can keep in mind. Uh, one note you write down after this. Done, Otto? Oh. One note you write down. The enthalpy of formation delta FH, the enthalpy of formation of substance in pure or standard state. Or a standard state is zero. Okay, pure or a standard state is zero. So for those like for molecules for which delta F of H like enthalpy formation is zero is we have O2 gases state enthalpy of formation is zero. We have H2 gases state enthalpy of formation is zero. N2 gases state enthalpy of formation is zero. Carbon graphite form the enthalpy formation is zero. Sometimes they also write down solid. Solid, you understand graphite only. If diamond is not mentioned. Reference rate is zero. Phosphorus, if you have white phosphorus, delta FH is zero. Sulfur, if it is rhombic, rhombic sulfur, delta FH is zero. Tin, if you have white tin, delta FH is zero. Correct. Copy this down. For all these elements, the standard state, you know, there the enthalpy of formation would be zero. Okay. Now, one last thing you see. If you have a reaction, uh, A, uh, their state is given, A, gas, I'm assuming, B, gas, I'm assuming, gives C, gas, and D, gas. Suppose we have this reaction. So enthalpy of formation of C and D would be delta FH, obviously for one mole, is equals to the enthalpy of formation of uh, C plus enthalpy of formation of D minus the reactant one. Enthalpy of formation of A plus enthalpy of formation of D. This is the enthalpy of formation product minus reactant that you need to do. And it should be one mole. If it is not one mole, then this won't be the enthalpy of formation. Keep that in mind. Okay, fine. Take a break now. After the break, we'll resume with this. Some other enthalpy term we'll see. 635 will resume. Take a break. <laughs> 